ROAS or return on ad spend is one of the best metrics to use when it comes to measuring your marketing because without it, it can be hard to compare like for like. A Facebook lead compared to a Google ads lead is gonna be very different both in terms of quality and intent. It's hard getting past lead volume and into revenue based stats, but we're here to show you how. Return on ad spend isn't a new metric, but the way we measure it and the tools we're measuring it in are definitely changing. Marketers are under immense pressure to drive revenue from their campaigns and their content. But when customer journeys get more and more complicated, it can be hard to filter out the data you need to prove your worth. And if you're not getting the data you need to prove your impact, then how are you optimizing your work? The truth is you're not. In actual fact, you're just changing factors that might be impacting revenue, but you just can't prove it. Google Analytics is a go-to tool when it comes to marketing measurement, but it does sometimes fall flat if you're a marketer that has to generate leads as opposed to direct revenue. Don't worry, that's what we're here for. Keep watching to learn more about ROAS and how to track it more effectively in tools like Google Analytics so you're left with more effective data. ROAS or return on ad spend is the metric used to track the impact of your paid advertising on your bottom line. You've likely heard of it and return on investment when looking at marketing efficiency. Return on ad spend differs from ROI as it looks specifically at how much revenue you generate compared to how much you spend on paid channels. ROI is the total generated compared to your entire marketing budget, i.e. marketing tools, staffing costs, etc. Calculating ROAS is simple too. You just need to divide the revenue from your ads by the cost invested, which you can then multiply by 100. What's not so easy is pulling out the revenue data from your ads, but we'll get onto that in a bit. If you work in marketing, chances are you use Google Analytics, but where do you find ROAS and GA? In Universal Analytics, ROAS was only available once you'd integrated your Google Ad accounts to your Google Analytics account, and you could only view it as a metric in the Google Ads report or in the cost analysis report. For Google Analytics 4, you don't have either of these reports. Instead, you just have one overall advertising report. To view it, head to advertising and then select all channels under performance. Here, you can view all of your paid marketing channels by the following metrics. Conversions, ad costs, cost per conversion, total revenue, and of course, return on ad spend. Remember, this data will be applied automatically to the data-driven attribution model built by GA. You can change this by heading to admin and under property, selecting attribution settings. Here, you'll be able to choose your preferred attribution model type. Google advises data-driven, but make sure you choose whatever model type suits you best. You can change this model as you like, as it will apply to both historical and future data. The data you see here in GA4, however, has its limitations. As far as attribution is concerned, these limitations can be whittled down to short look back windows, a lack of customer journey detail, and manual data upload. Let's break these down into a bit more detail. Google Analytics 4 only offers sure options for lookback windows. For acquisition conversion events, you can either choose seven days or 30 days. How often do you make a purchasing decision within a month, particularly for high value items or in the B2B space? This limitation means you're likely going to be unable to attribute close sales back to your marketing activities. For other conversion events, you can choose between 30 days, 60 days or 90 days, but these aren't for acquisition based conversions they're likely to be used for lead conversions, which, although useful, is still not ideal for accurate reporting. Google Analytics 4 has strict privacy policies to adhere to, meaning it can be hard for its users to get any clear indication of individual customer journeys. While GA4 does offer the conversion path report, this still buckets to users and averages metrics. It will tell you total revenue plus average touch points and time to close, and while this is helpful, it is still only top level, meaning you can't get much in the way of deeper insight into your marketing efforts. Google anticipates a lot of the data being unattributable too. You can automatically pull in your advertising data from Google Ads to J4, but for your other paid campaigns, you have to manually upload your cost data via data import. You can upload CSV files that contain external data to your analytic property, 
You can export CSV files from offline business tools like your CRM or CMS system, or for smaller amounts of data, you can create the files manually in a text editor or a spreadsheet. Data import joins the offline data you upload with the event data that Analytics collects. The data you import enhances your reports, comparisons, and audiences. You can import cost data, that's third-party ad network clicks, cost and impression data, item data, that's product metadata like size, color, style, or other product-related dimensions, user data, user metadata, e.g. loyalty rating or lifetime customer value, offline data, that's offline events from external sources. Your data will be added to J4 in one of two ways, collection slash processing time and reporting or query time. The first is where data is joined to analytics data as it's collected and processed, almost as if it was being tracked in real time. User data and offline data are joined in this way. The latter is where data is joined at the point of reporting, i.e. open a report and analytics start to query for that data. Cost and item data are joined in this way, so it's worth remembering if you delete the imported data file, you can no longer access that data in analytics. As you can see, there are complications to this as data import is a complicated process and it requires a lot of manual labor. Another shortcoming is that you can't see real-time data for cost. Importing data requires a data source to be created. A data source is your CSV file with corresponding analytics fields that need to be mapped to your CSV data. Head to your GA4 settings and click Data Import. Then click Data Sources and name your data source. You can then click and select a data type from cost data to offline event data. Scroll down and select Upload CSV. Choose your CSV file and click Open and then click next. J4 will then ask you to map your analytics fields to your import data fields. This includes things like campaign medium, campaign name. Once that's done, select import and J4 will upload your data. As this is just a test file, our file won't work but your data stream is now running. You can also create a data source via SFTP. So again, click create data source and name your source. Then select your data type. Select SFTP and then fill in the following parameters. Username, URL, and then select your schedule. Once you've done that, click next and your SFTP will upload. If you wanna add more data, We'll show you how via the CSV upload, just click import now and then upload your new file. Again, ours won't work because it's a test document, but you can see J4 uploads and then pulls through the new data. If you ever need to delete your data source, click the arrow, then click the three dots and then click delete. Google Analytics 4 is offering more capabilities for marketers to apply attribution data to their marketing numbers. But remember, GA is not an attribution tool. As we discussed, J4 has a number of limitations when it comes to accessing revenue data against your marketing channels. And this is where we come in. Ruler is a marketing attribution tool serving customers with reliable lead and revenue data for all of their marketing channels. If you're overwhelmed by the amount of data you have from app to app, and you're looking for a simple solution to track, evidence and optimize your marketing, then you're in luck. Ruler supports marketers to aggregate data and provides visitor level insights to help revolutionize your marketing strategy. How Ruler works is simple. A user visits your website for the first time. With Ruler's tracking code on your website, Ruler can pull key marketing information about this user and store it under their personal cookie data. As that user revisits your site, Ruler will continue to merge data held to create a digital journey. Let's say that this user decides to convert and fills in a form on your site. At this point, all of that data Ruler is holding will be fired over to your CRM for sales teams to pick up on. When your sales team closes that lead into a customer, Ruler will scrape all of the revenue data held against them in the CRM and fire it over to the marketing analytics tools that you use every day there, it's automatically attributed to influencing channels and campaigns. The seamless integration pushes and pulls the data you already have in your apps to where you need it most. 
it means you can bypass the endless data integration and upload and let Ruler do all the hard work for you. So if you're looking for an easy way to integrate your marketing data into Google Analytics, then look no further. If you want to learn more about how Ruler works, then check out our website. I'll share a link in the description below. But for more information on GA4 and getting the most out of your data, then subscribe to our channel. We share regular tips and tricks to help marketers work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm.